My friend, we have talked about minor sins so far today compared to some. But Brother Marcus likes to save the worst for the last. For my friends, there are sinners amongst us who would make Satan look like a guardian angel. That's right. Talking about them makes me shudder. These sinners are known affectionately as superintendents. <laughs> oh, my friends, the sins they have committed. They turned up the air condition and keep these buildings so warm, the customers can bring their Thanksgiving turkey in here and make them in the store. <laughs> and they do this in the name of energy management. <laughs> I'll manage their energy. <laughs> But friends, that is only the tip of the iceberg. Those friends, they stoop to the lowest when they become personnel superintendents. <laughs> oh, my friends, my friends, look. Look at these schedules and what they do to our department managers. You know what they tell you? If you have too many people, all they do is stand around and talk about personal things. So if you don't have anybody, there'll be nobody to talk to one of them. <laughs> and they will pick up the item, look around, and they will have to go back to the store manager. And the store manager will ring it up, if they know how. <laughs> Therefore, we will have total run up here. Oh, look at these schedules. Now, I want to ask you something. Just listen to me now. How many stomachs out there have shriveled because you couldn't go to eat because it didn't give you a lunch relief? That's right! <laughs> And how many, now listen to me, I'm not through. How many bladders have exploded out there? Go to the party! Wait, my friends, wait. Let me tell you something. These you fall into the trap of placing all the blame on these superintendents. But my friends, they are not entirely at fault. Oh, no. You see, these poor devils are controlled by a demon. A devil of a man. He resides downtown on the fifth floor in his untidy office. He calls himself the crude superintendent. But we have other names for him, don't we? My friends, help me. We can change their wicked ways. We can change their attitudes.
they close the department out? <laughs> you know what's down there now? Men's is in the basement. And then they got some stupid red door in front of the store. Some jerky cosmetic promotion. <laughs> And they stink that main floor up, too. Good morning, and welcome to the CK Morning News. In a dastardly act of terrorism, <clears throat> excuse me, the Kane Sloan Liberation Army kidnapped Virgil Wood, the manager of the Craighead Distribution Center. Their ransom demand included the newly remodeled Rivergate store and $1 million in cash. Mr. Ralph Glassford, president of Castor and I, immediately made a counteroffer of six pairs of action slacks and a dozen Christie cookies. <laughs> Mr. Ron Clemens of Donaldson won the Paul Sebastian Who is Peggy Moore contest which began several Sundays ago in the Nashville, Tennessee. His prize was a much needed Space Invaders computer game personally autographed by the Queen of Space Invaders, Ms. Moore. <laughs> In a story related to the kidnapping reported earlier, Raymond Watson has been advised by Charles Chadwick that it's perhaps too soon for Watson to take over Mr. Woods' office. <laughs> Woods was reported missing at 6.04 this morning, and Watson tried to take over his office at 6.07. <laughs> it was thought perhaps Watson may have been involved in the kidnapping until it was discovered that at the time of the incident, he was eating a shipment of candy that was received with no order, so there would be more room on the no order line. <laughs> Downtown Byers sent a pair of prescription glasses to Mr. Ed Todd to enhance his hindsight since he has developed that he has developed in his 18 months as a store manager. <laughs> and now the word from our weather wizard, Les Siler. Thanks, Carol. Here's today's weather. Pick me haul up and expect thunderbolt. The surf's up in Donaldson. There's a fog in Green Hills. And Mr. Norris will be up to his knees in a six-inch snow far in Park And at last, there will be sunlight coming through the back door at Rivergate. And now back to you, Ken. Absolutely not said Joe Lambert when he heard rumors that he might retire now that he has a wife to support him. <laughs> However, I will not be as reluctant to say what I think as I have been in the past. <laughs> and now the sports with our own Jim McRafferty. recently to remove Jim Kelly's left foot from his right ear after he, after he tried to let out the shaft when teeing off on the first hole of the National Athletic Club. His playing partners, Rocky Myers, Bob Gowan, and Ron Farrell, were treated for laughter and released. Uh, Mr. Bill Marrero has overcome the shortage of highlight equipment in Bowling Green. <laughs> by bending some of the hubcaps from his famous hubcap collection. <laughs> Mr. Marrero, better known in the sports world as Chico, <laughs> practices each day to the song Maria from West Side Sports. Wes Howe has been secretly attending basketball games regularly since first hearing the swish as the ball went through the net. <laughs> okay, one last thing here, Kevin. And this is truly, truly a great honor. It's strictly my pleasure. We're now, now happy to present a taped interview with the Vice President of Castor Knot, the world-renowned sports supporter, Mr. Michael Walsh. Yeah, 
this is a taped interview. During the interview, uh, we asked if his participation in sports helped him in his professional career. Mr. Mike Walsh commented, soccer has been very, very good to me. <laughs> Back to you, Ken. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. And now a few notes from Rona Millslater. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> and now for a few, few tidbits from the ju juicy world of retailing. What advertising director is seeing that new dentist in town, Dr. Manicure? What group superintendent has borrowed the vow to hire a person for every button on the phones in the personnel office? What class of trainees breathed a collective sigh of relief when they learned that out of necessity the final exam would be graded on a low curve? What Green Hill store manager is re rumored to have had a jogging track installed on the roof of his store? And now back to you, Gerald. You are Gerald. Yes. Now it's time for guest editorial from Concerned Citizen and Latella. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. What's all this talk about Mark Downs taking drugs? I've known Mark since he was a small boy, and he was oh, never. Damn. No, they weren't talking about a person. They were talking about Mark Downs being high. Mark Downs being high. <laughs> oh, never mind. So what's all this talk about a news in advertising? I've been advertising a lot, and I've never seen. No, 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 I am. They're talking about Mickey Cavanaugh's hair. <laughs> Never mind. Today's Sunshine Award goes to Mr. Ralph Glassford. He was nominated by the store managers and the buyers because of his kindness, understanding, good nature, and also because April will be here before long. <laughs> Good day, Kim. Good day, Gerald, and good day from all of us at CK News. All that news, all that news just makes me sick. Just the other day I heard Ed was in the sewer in Florence and he can't get out. Let's find something educational. Okay, for what? Well, you, you couldn't find anything educational if you tried. Geography, Alice. Some geography. Cartoons. I'm uh, gonna watch cartoons. Alice, you'll be the first loudmouth on the moon. We're gonna watch cartoons, Ralph. That's all there is to it, Ralph. We're watching cartoons, Ralph. Get a good shot of Rocky's hair. Well, Ralph, it's too early for the cartoons. <laughs> She'll be up just as soon as possible. 